the besties welcome or welcome back today i have over 40 summer diys to inspire you this diy i'm using one of those arrow uh, summer signs i'm going to take it apart and it comes off really easy by the way they're just staples and i did uh, sand down where the little staple holes were i didn't need to fill anything in it wasn't very deep and then i'm gonna use my little ladybug vacuum cleaner to clean it up and that's in my amazon store in the description box below and now I'm just going to figure out how I could turn this into a little bit of a picket fence. So I'm going to take some skewers just to create spacers between each of the arrows. Try to get them even. Then I realize, oh, I want the other side to be the front. So I'm going to end up turning it over. And I'm going to use these shims. They have like a narrow end and a thick end. So I'm going to take two for each one. I'm going to figure out how long they need to be. I'm measuring that. I'm going to cut them with my miter shears, also down in my Amazon store. Very cool tool, by the way. And I'm going to glue the two pieces together to make a whole piece. And then I'm going to put them across the front of my fence and hot glue those down. And it actually, once I figured out what I really wanted to do, it wasn't really easy. It was just deciding what I wanted to do. That's always the problem. I just have so many ideas. <laughs> now I'm going to sand the top of each of those pieces that I put together. And there I am hot gluing. So basically I'm putting, you can see the narrow side with the wide side and so forth. And then it makes a solid piece. And then I will hot glue those directly to the top. And once they're down, I can remove those spacers. I don't know if you noticed, I did not glue where the spacers are going to be because that's going to be my little gaps in the fence. I'm going to use my sanding sponge from the Dollar Tree and just make sure that all the edges are smooth and that there won't be any splinters. Then I'm going to use my Waverly chalk paint in the color Maze, which is just a yellow. And I'm going to cover the entire fence, um, the front, those crossbars, the edges, not the back, though. I'm going to paint that a different color. And it takes me about two coats to get this completely covered. I've got this really pretty scrapbook paper and I'm just gonna cut a piece to cover the top of each of those crossbars. That's all I want for this one. And once those are cut out, I'm going to use some of my Aileen's decoupage and I'm gonna put that, it's just like Mod Podge by the way, I'm gonna apply that to the crossbars so that I can lay down the scrapbook paper. And then I'm going to use my brayer over the top and then coat the top again with the decoupage solution. I have some letter stickers from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to get out the ones that I need. I'm going to be spelling out the word B and crossing. So on this fence, it's just going to say B crossing. And then I also got these super cute little B stickers from Michaels and I'm going to apply them all over. But before I do that, I also have another piece of scrapbook paper that looks like little honeycombs. So I'm going to cut it out at different angles to kind of create little honeycombs and I'm going to adhere them using the decoupage solution which I'm doing right there and put the bees on it. So it looks like they're in the hive kind of, you'll see what I mean. So then I'm just going to be putting bees all over the place because if it's a bee crossing there will be a lot of bees and then once I get all the bees down I'm going to cover everything with the decoupage solution just to make sure that nothing comes up again later. I'm going to be using my Kills White Primer paint that I use all the time for the back side and it's going to take two or three coats and then after that's done I'm going to take some rope, I'm going to hot glue it down and use my masking tape like I always do and secure it. And I'm loving how this one turned out, it's super cute. Let me know what you think. This little tool caddy that originally came from the Home Depot. I got it for $1.99 and I did get a discount on that. I've got these lemons and limes I ordered on Amazon and this cute scrap of paper that I also got on Amazon. And what I'm gonna do is clean off this little caddy first with the crud cutter. Then I'm gonna use my Rust-Oleum linen white chalk paint and I'm just gonna paint the whole thing. I want it to have a nice clean white base. 
Once that's done, looks nice and fresh now. I'm going to cut out some of that scrapbook paper and I lost the footage, but I cut a piece for each of the sides, the shorter tall sides and then the two other sides. I'm just showing you a quick picture of it. I roughed up the edges with my scissor blade, which you don't get to see, but I just did that to give it a little bit nicer look. And then I also painted the top handle bright yellow and I added some lemons in there with some greenery and I made a little bow out of some Dollar Tree ribbon. And this is what it looked like before and this is what it looks like after. And I think it is so cute. It's got such a bright, fresh look and I really, really love it. Let me know what you think. This Dollar Tree calendar DIY hack is so easy. I'm using the Simply Blessed calendar and I'm gonna take from the back cover the larger piece that we're showing you an example of the month. And I'm just gonna cut that out and it's so cute. It's got lemons, it's very summery. And it says, enjoy the simple things. And I found this really cool glass frame at the Dollar Tree and then I've got this scrapbook paper from Walmart and I'm picking out this yellow and white one. It's got a, a pattern in the background, it's probably hard to see. Anyway, so I'm just going to take this apart. It's got two panes of glass inside and what I'm going to do is remove the backing and then take the two pieces of glass out and then separate them and I'm going to use that piece of paper that's stuck on there and I'm going to use that as a guide to cut out my scrapbook paper. I'm going to go ahead and clean off the glass first. There was a little bit of sticky stuff there and I'm just going to turn it on the back and use a pencil to trace around that shape and then I'll cut that out and that'll become like a layer for the backing of my picture and there you see I've got that right there. And then I'm going to take my little picture from the back of the calendar and lay it right over the top. And I'm going to use my special tape roller that I got on Amazon. It should be in my Amazon store. I love this thing. No wet glue. Oh my gosh. So easy to use and no mess. You cannot beat that. And I'm just going to go ahead and stick that right in the center there, just eyeballing it. Now, the problem with me eyeballing is that I don't see straight and so my picture ended up being a little crooked, but I'm going to use my Beacon Fabric Tack Glue and just kind of put those edges down on the glass to make sure it stays in place. I'm going to put the other piece of glass over the top. I've cleaned all the panes of glass and then I'm going to put them back in the frame and assemble it. I told you this was easy. It's so easy. And then I'm going to clean the glass again because I keep touching it with my fingers. And I'm just using rubbing alcohol to clean it. It works very well. And that's it. How cute is that? I love this one, so easy, so inexpensive, oh my gosh. And when I took the pictures outside, it was so humid that the glass fogged up, so sorry about that. Anyway, you saw it before and you know how cute it really is, but I hope you guys like this one. These two really cute pieces were on their way to the Goodwill when I was able to get them for free from a friend. And I'm using the Agave color of Waverly Chalk Paint to paint just the very top of them. And I'm gonna use my little heat tool to dry them so I don't have to wait so long. Link in the description if you want one. And I'm gonna use a chippy brush and my White Kills Primer paint. And I'm going to kind of whitewash that. And then I'm gonna make sure that the edges are nice and white because I got a little paint over on the sides by accident. Now I'm taking a nail file and I'm gonna go around every hard edge around the outside. So basically there's the one at the top where the agave meets the white. There's the far edge where it would lay down. And then there's like a little middle ridge. And I'm also gonna do the knob on there as well, just to make sure that it gets that kind of distressed look. I'm gonna use my sanding sponge from the Dollar Tree just to go over the top where the agave and the whitewash were, just to smooth it out a little bit. And then I'm gonna take this polycrylic varnish by Minwax and I'm gonna go ahead and just cover the top, the sides, and the knot. I have these little napkin rings from the Dollar Tree and it comes six in a pack and I'm going to use two for each of these, oh, we'll call them sconces, and I'm going to hot glue two together and kind of line up the seams on them so that it becomes a little bit longer. I'm going to do that for both of these and then what I'm going to do is use that almost like a little flower vase and I've got these flowers from Dollar Tree. I'm going to push the leaves up and then use my tin snips to go ahead and just cut off little pieces. I like it better when I can kind of decide the size of them and I'm just going to arrange them. I have two different kinds like a baby's breath and a little white flower and I'm going to put them together. I'm going to make two little bouquets, one for each of those little vase things that I made. I 
with this really cute ribbon with kind of a swirly design on it, white and like almost like a gray. And I got that at Walmart. And I'm gonna wrap it around the bottom of the bouquet. And then I'm gonna um, also hot glue at the end when I'm all done. And I'm gonna just do that too. I didn't wanna use twine on this one because it's a little bit more modern farmhouse and it's got the silver and I just thought this looked better. And then I'm going to take uh, my tin snips and when I'm done and I'm going to snip the very ends of the little stems because they hang out just a little bit and I didn't want to see those. They are such a handy tool. I will also leave a link for those in my description box. Next I'm going to put some hot glue on the side of the little vase and I'm going to hot glue it right to the sconce. And then I'm going to take my flowers and I'm going to hot glue the very bottom to the inside of the little vase. And just make sure it's sticking nice and add any hot glue where I might need it to secure that. And then I put a little under the flowers as well. I really loved how this turned out with the color and everything. I hope you guys like it too. For this Dollar Tree calendar hack, I am going to do something different. I'm going to take this page. I forgot which calendar it came out of. Sorry about that. But it was just a cute beach sign. And you know what? I'm going to use it as inspiration. I have this little sign. I got it like a long time ago. And I had already painted it white. It used to be gray. And now I'm going to remove those little clips. And I'm going to recreate that beach sign as best as I can. And what I'm going to do first is take a pencil. And I'm going to, just by looking at it, try to recreate those letters. And I think I did pretty, pretty good. You know, it's kind of a rough surface to write on. And then I'm gonna have to put my arrow to the right because there's just not enough room down there. Anyway, then I have like a Dremel. It's basically actually a kit for doing like acrylic nails, but I just put an attachment on the end that would be perfect for this. And I am just literally gonna go over all of the letters that I drew out with my little Dremel tool. And then I've got the word beach with the arrow on there. And you guys, this was so easy. I could have used a scrap piece of wood. I just happened to have this sign and I thought, you know what, I'm not using it and there's just no reason to keep the clips on it. And look at that, it came out so cute. I'm gonna mix so many different colors of acrylic paint and chalk paint that I'm not even gonna list them because you know what, you can do this any color you want. I just kept messing with it. I bet I even have a paint color at the end that it was without having to mix, but you know what, live and learn. So I just keep adding colors until I kind of get what I like. And like I said, do whatever you want. Use any kind of blue or, or I don't know, just either ocean color or sand color, something that goes along with that coastal theme. And guess what, this is gonna go in my bedroom. Anyway, I'm taking a little paintbrush and I'm actually just dabbing it on because you can't spread paint on this. It's too rough of a surface. It's very rough wood. And so I sped this up because who needs to watch me paint? We all know what that looks like, but there you go. Now you can see it. And you guys, I'm gonna dry it with my heat tool from Amazon. And I just love this already. And then because the paint went over the edges a little, I'm just gonna take the Dremel and go back over the edges and clean up the paint and look at it. I honestly love this one. You'll have to let me know what you think. It's so cute. and. I just got inspired by a picture on a calendar from Dollar Tree. So next time you look at your calendars, you know. Are you ready for another super, super easy Dollar Tree calendar hack? So this calendar that I'm showing you right now has one of the months with these watermelon pictures, which are so cute. And I just thought, you know what? I could make a little watermelon garland. So I cut them all out. And then I've got this faux leather and I'm gonna use that on the back. So I'm just gonna use my Beacon Fabric Tack Glue and I'm gonna glue it right on to the back side of the faux leather. And I'm gonna cut it out again. And then one side will be the little paper picture from the calendar. And then the back side will be that faux leather. Now it's in gray, that's the color I have, that in brown. I wish it was green. But what I decided to do was take well, first I'm gonna take some Mod Podge, sorry. And I'm gonna go over each one on the front to protect the paper and that just real fast and then let it dry. Then I'm gonna use a green jot marker from the Dollar Tree and I'm just gonna go over the back. You could use paint markers, whatever you have, but because of the leather, faux leather texture, it comes out so cool. So I did that to all of them. And I'll show you up close here. I gotta dry them off because it gets on your fingers, otherwise all the ink. But I will bring that up closer. Do you see that texture? 
there's my little watermelon rind, and then I've got this green and white twine, and then these, this is my crocodile. I got this on Amazon, it's in my store, and I can cut so easily right through this because that way I can string this little garland with the twine. So I'm just gonna make a hole on each side just below the little rind on the watermelon, and I needed to put a little glue on the end just to kind of thicken up that end and make it stiff, and then it goes right through the hole, no problem. So I'm only gonna show you me stringing one because then we all know what that looks like, and I strung them all, and how cute is that? It could go on a tear tray or just anywhere. It's just a short little garland, but I love it. And I think it just came out so cute. Absolutely easy, no sewing involved, nothing. And it's sturdy because of the faux leather. So let me know if you would try something like this. Dollar Tree has faux leather too. I'm using this little sign from the Dollar Tree. It's got some clothes pins and rope, which I won't use. And then I found this really cute scrapbook paper at a thrift shop in Nebraska when I was visiting. I'm gonna start off by removing that little jute twine and the little clothes pins. And I'm gonna sand down the front. And then I'm gonna use some plaster chalk paint by Waverly and cover the front and back completely. I'm gonna dry it off with my heat gun and I will put a link in the description box for that one. And then, like I said, cover the back as well. I've chosen this really cute striped scrapbook paper and I'm gonna trace the shape of my little sign out and I'll cut that out. And then I'm gonna use a glue stick from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to attach it. And it worked really well, by the way. I haven't always had luck with them, but this time it worked, so I was very happy about that. And then I'm gonna use a little nail file and sand around the edges because every once in a while you get a little hangover and that gets rid of it. And I'm gonna use my ladybug tool to clean up all the dust from the sanding. And I had painted these blocks, and I'm sorry that I didn't do it on camera. I painted them all white, except for the outline of the letters on the front, I did yellow. And it spells out lemons. And now I'm hot gluing them to the bottom of this sign, like a little shelf. Last spring, I found these cute little lemon slices at the Dollar Tree made out of wood. And so I'm using my Arteza paint markers in white and yellow, and I'm going to paint them and color it in like little lemon slices, like they are. And they come out really cute, you guys. Oh my gosh, I love them. I have this netted burlap ribbon from burlapfabric.com that I adore. I will definitely leave the link below for this. And I'm gonna use this to make kind of a faux basket. So I'm gonna cut out a little strip and I'm gonna hot glue it right onto the sign. Then I'm gonna use some more to make the other side like the front of the basket. And then I'm gonna make a little handle for the basket out of some rope that I got at the Dollar Tree. And it's obviously not a real basket, but it's just gonna look like, you know, kind of a fake one on my sign. And then I'm gonna take those little lemons, I'm gonna hot glue them as if they're in the basket. And then I'll put this other piece of the netted burlap ribbon over the top and wrap it around. And it'll look, like I said, like a little basket. And this is coming out so cute. I kind of was making this up as I go, you know, like really winging it. But I'm really happy because I'm really loving it. Now I've got this little chalkboard clothespin thing from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to trace out another little piece of scrapbook paper that has lemons on it. I'm going to use my glue stick again and I'm going to attach it. And that just fits right on there perfectly. I'm gonna use that little nail file again to get around the edges, which works out really good in small spaces. And I'm gonna take a Sharpie black marker and I'm just gonna write five cents. I couldn't find a sticker and I didn't wanna pull out my Cricut. I have it kind of, my craft room's a mess right now. So anyway, <laughs> I didn't wanna grab it and I just went ahead and wrote it and put it on there and I hot glued the clothespin on. Now I took a little scrap piece of wood that I shaped with a sanding sponge and I'm going to pull out some rub-on stickers from the Dollar Tree and spell out the word fresh. Now I should have made this little piece of wood a teeny bit bigger so they are really squished together but it's kind of cute and I'm going to use a little bit of a foam piece to raise that up a little bit and I'm going to hot glue that right on the front and then I'm going to get this really cool sisal rope that is comes in three parts really so I'm going to pull one part away and I'm just going to hot glue it all the way around the edge of my sign you guys I love this I hope you like it too I really think it turned out cute and it was so fun to make Coveted Farmer's Market 
calendar from Dollar Tree and I'm going to use the page that has the honeybee on it. And I'm going to use a piece of cardboard. It was just a box that I had. I'm going to cut off the bendy parts with a blade and I'm going to make it slightly bigger than the actual calendar page. And what I'm going to use is something I got from burlapfabric.com. It's a faux brown leather. It is so cool. It's a huge piece of fabric and I'm going to cut out a square just slightly bigger than my cardboard and then I am going to take each corner fold it up and hot glue it and then I'll come back and fold all the sides in so that I can get a nice square out of it and if you're wondering why I covered the entire piece of cardboard well I didn't think about this till after the fact I could have just cut out strips for what would really show and save some of that faux leather my bad I didn't even think of it till after the fact Now that I've covered my piece of cardboard, I'm going to take my calendar page and I'm going to use a glue stick from the Dollar Tree and I'm just going to cover the entire thing generously in the glue stick. And then I'm going to press it down onto my faux leather and I'm even going to use my little brayer which is in my Amazon store. It's a great tool for adhering things to surfaces when you've used glue or any kind of a adhesive. It's really good at getting out wrinkles and bubbles and not to say that you'll never get them but it really helps quite a bit. I have this really pretty ribbon from the Dollar Tree. It's burlap with lace going down the middle and I'm going to put one strip of it across the side over that kind of burlap in the print of the calendar page. I thought I have real burlap why not do that and make it more textured and three-dimensional. So I'm hot gluing that right on there and I'm going to secure it on both sides and then on the back to make sure that it's nice and attached. another ribbon from the Dollar Tree. It's just lace and I'm going to put it over the two corners on the right side of my picture here just to kind of set off the corners a little bit and I'm going to attach that on the back at the angle so that it goes diagonal across each corner. And then I'm going to take one long piece and put it next to the other ribbon just covering that end so that all four corners actually do have the lace on them. I want this sign to look old and worn so I'm going to take my antique wax by Waverly and I'm going to use a baby wipe and I'm just going to start by doing the edges and over the lace and then I realize it's almost just too light in the middle so I'm just going to do the whole thing and I go crazy and I just but I lightly rub I'm not going that crazy just a little crazy. I ordered these um, upholstery tacks off of Amazon and they'll be in my Amazon store. They are so beautiful and this is the perfect project for it. So I'm going to poke them into each of the four corners, add a little bit of hot glue underneath the actual tack and then later I'll come back and I'll clip off the pointy edge on the back. But how pretty is this? Oh my gosh, I am loving this look so much. Now I've got these skewers, they're the very narrow skewers from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to use four of them and I'm going to outline the piece of paper that is the calendar sign and I'm going to use the antique wax again and I'm going to stain them and then I will measure and use my little snips and cut off the edge, make sure that I dip the end into the wax so it doesn't look like a different color and I'm going to hot glue them down all the way around the entire calendar page. Now the ones on the top and bottom I have to poke underneath the ribbon as you see me doing there and then I go ahead and hot glue it and then I'm going to add one last piece over between the two ribbons on the left side. And here's a close up of me snipping the pointy end of the upholstery tack. Now I'm using a little piece of rope and I'm hot gluing it to the back and then I'm going to take a piece of masking tape while the glue is hot and put that right over the top. That just really secures that rope down. And then I've cut a piece of craft paper and I'm going to hot glue it to the back and trim the edges of that so that it's a nice finished piece. In order to get my little rope hanger out, I'm going to take my blade and just cut around where the rope is and then I'm going to pull it through and then this one is done and I'm really happy with it and I hope you guys like it too.
I'm using this little mason jar sign from the Dollar Tree and a page out of one of the famous calendars, the Simply Blessed calendar at the Dollar Tree. I'm going to use my little spatula and I'm going to remove those two limes on the front. I'm going to remove the little jute twine that was on there and use my heat tool to get rid of the tag. And now I'm going to lay the mason jar sign over the top of that calendar piece and I'm going to trace it out and then I'm going to cut it out and I'm going to use some Mod Podge to attach it. And then you see that part of the handle didn't get on there and, and the top. I'm just going to piece some little extras together and make that work. And then I will also use the Mod Podge to attach those as well. I'm going to put a layer of the Mod Podge over the top just to protect the paper. And I'm going to sand around the edges to make sure I get any excess paper that might have hung over. I'm going to sand the top of the little lines because they were covered in glitter. And then I'm going to use Arteza paint markers in white and yellow and I'm going to turn these limes into lemons. I'm going to use some hot glue and attach the little lemons onto the front of my mason jar. Kind of like it's a glass of lemonade. And then I am going to use some um, mesh tubing and wrap it around to create the threads on the mason jar. And I'll attach that with hot glue. Since I removed the original hanger, I'm going to use a little bit of rope, hot glue, and masking tape and just create a little hanger on the back. And since I like my projects to be finished on both sides, I'm going to use some craft paper, hot glue it to the back, trim it, and then I will cover the back and it will look nice and finished. I'm adding a little Mod Podge to the two lemons in the front, and there you can see how I have my little hanger poking through the craft paper in the back. I am really happy with how this one turned out. excited about this project. I'm using some book pages again and I'm going to actually put it on a Cricut mat and I went into Cricut Studio and I got some little butterfly shapes that would fit the what I'm going to use them for and I went ahead and I had them cut and now I'm just leading them out and I'm going to take them off the mat and then what I'm going to do is bend them all in the middle. So it kind of looks like the wings are flying, like when a butterfly's wings are up against each other. And then I'm going to add these pieces of what would be trash to a really small little wreath I got at Dollar Tree. I'm going to glue them on, but first I'm going to add some other things to the wreath. I have this really pretty flower pick that I got at Dollar Tree and I'm going to pull off some actual little flowers without the stems and then some of those little green kind of berries. And then I found a couple different ribbons at Dollar Tree. One is a little thin polka dotted kind of a ribbon and they're a little bit see-through and then one is a pink and they're just so pretty and light. And I didn't want to overpower the wreath with a lot of color because I want the butterflies to really be kind of the, I don't know, the focal point if you will. So I'm just wrapping the ribbon around, hot gluing it, kind of in a diagonal and then I'm going to add the thinner one with the polka dots over the middle of the pink one just to give it a, a little bit of a layered look and I'm really liking the way that's turning out. this little piece of burlap left over from a DIY in my last video and I didn't want to waste it so I decided to use it to make a hanger. I just cross it around itself and hot glue it to the back and then secure it with another little piece of that same burlap and then I'm gonna have a nice little hanger for my wreath.
And as I said before, I'm going to take the little flowers and some of those little green berries and just kind of randomly put them around the wreath. I don't want to go crazy. I'm not going to cover the whole thing, but just, you know, intermittently with space between them all, I'm going to add them to the wreath just to give it some color and make it a little spring-like. I'm gonna hot glue the little butterflies in various places. I want it to look like they just kind of landed wherever on the wreath. And I absolutely love them. I think with the words on them, it's just the sweetest thing. It's making me want to do more DIYs with book pages. I just think it's such a sweet touch. And I don't know, let me know what you think. I just love this. I've never done anything like this before and I'm, I'm so happy with how it's turning out. My only regret is that I didn't make them bigger. <laughs> little bicycle at Dollar General which I rarely go to it's not right by my house and I'm going to remove that front little sign with my spatula and then I'm going to take my Arteza paint markers and I'm going to fill in the flowers and the leaves and I did the bicycle frame and by accident I got caught up in the coloring and I forgot it was going to be lemons <laughs> so when I realized what I did I went ahead and I covered the wheels in white because I planned on doing something different and I don't know what happened so now I'm just going to trace out the shape of a circle using one of my paint lids and then I'm going to turn those wheels in into lemons. I don't know, I got so caught up. I think I thought I was just coloring. It was kind of fun actually. So I'm creating the little shape of like a lemon slice if you cut it right in half. And I'm doing that on each of the wheels with my paint markers. And then I'm gonna fill those in with the yellow as well. And I think they come out super cute. And now I'm filling in the little rind around the edge of the lemon. I'm also gonna color in some other things here, the basket and the seat. found these cute little sticker decals at Michael's and I'm gonna put the fresh one in the middle and then just add a little lemon to the back and then I'm gonna take my plaster chalk paint and I'm gonna paint all the way around all the edges because it was kind of like a brown MDF substance and I'm gonna paint the entire back with it as well Since you can see the back, I decided to add some really cute scrapbook paper. I traced around the bike and now I've got this adorable lemon scrapbook paper on the back and I'm using a glue stick to attach it. And that way if it's on a tear tray or you'll still be able to see it no matter where it sits. And I'm sanding any excess that hangs over off and I'm gonna put a coat of Mod Podge over it to seal it. And I'm just so happy with this one too. I hope you guys like it. those little dice from Dollar Tree and some little cutouts from the back of these calendars from the Dollar Tree, the Farmer's Market and the Simply Blessed calendars. And I'm just gonna use those little pictures on the very back of the calendars. I'm gonna pick any lemon related ones, which I was lucky enough to find four of them, which worked out great because I only had six bases to cover and I came up with a solution for that too. And these are gonna be so cute. I trimmed them down to size and then I'm going to paint my dice or die with the Kills White primer. I'm going to cover it. It takes about two and a half coats pretty much. And then I'm going to put some Mod Podge down and on each of those four sides I'm going to put the little pieces that I cut out from those calendar backs. And I'm also going to put Mod Podge over the top and just generously coat them so they stay in place. And in case you're wondering, I am making this to put on a tear tray. It's just the perfect size and no matter what angle you look at it, there'll be something really cute and lemony on it, which I think is going to be super fun for spring and summer.
Now remember those decal stickers that I got at Michael's? I found two that would fit perfectly on the two sides that still needed something. And then I took my Arteza paint markers and I drew little teeny lemons in every single corner. So there's eight of them all together and they came out so cute. Oh my gosh, it just was that little pop of color there that it really needed. And there's the little leaves that I'm putting on. I'm in love with this thing, it's adorable. I cannot wait to hear what you guys think. Please tell me in the comments. I'm going to use actually only one of these little signs with the butterfly and the little pom-poms on the side, which I do take off using my little Cricut spatula. <laughs> hey, they come right off. And these are from the Dollar Tree. And then I sand down the sides. And they still have a little bit left over, but I'm going to cover that with a little bit of my uh, decoupage solution. I've got this scrap of paper and I just want to get a square to cover the top of the sign. So I'm going to cut this yellow one out. It has that kind of beehive look and, and I just really like it. So I'm going to take that square and I'm going to attach it to the very top of my box. And I will run my brayer across the top so I can make sure I don't get any wrinkles or bubbles. I'm going to also add some of that solution to the sides where I ripped off the pom-poms to smooth it out a bit. I'm going to use my square so I can decide how far apart I can make my lines. I want to make little planks, you know, like shiplap lines. And I'm going to do that in pencil. And my friends Trish and Kay from the Crafting Cousins have this technique and I've been trying it a few times where you put it on with pencil, you get your fingers a little wet and you kind of smudge it and then it really does give that sense of like a cut plank. And I really like it, it's super easy to do too. I'll leave their channel link below so you can check them out. They're really, really talented. And I'm using a nail file from the Dollar Tree just to uh, get that extra little piece of scrapbook paper off the edge that hung over a teeny bit. And now I'm using that maize color again from Waverly and I'm gonna do all four sides. It takes a couple coats to cover. And then I'm gonna use the side of my nail file to extend that line all the way around both sides so that it really does look like those are pieces of wood. I felt like I wanted to accentuate the lines even more so I got my steel colored chalk paint out and I just lightly went over and then actually wiped it off a little bit and smudged it and that kind of gave me a little more of what I needed. I think my pencil was too sharp. I needed it to be a little bit less blunt and then I would have gotten a thicker line. So, and now I went too far on the side so I'm covering it back up with the yellow paint. You know, you just go back and forth till you get what you want. Now I'm gonna use these Dollar Tree rub-on transfer letters and I'm going to spell out be happy. And I'm just figuring out where I'm gonna put my little B. I got that at Michael's. Isn't that the cutest B ever? So I'm just gonna scratch on those letters until I get them all put on the way I want. I'm gonna add my decoupage solution all over the top so that my letters stay on forever. I'm gonna add craft paper to the back and just hot glue it to the edges. And then I'm going to attach my B and I'm gonna use a combination of Gorilla Glue and hot glue. The B is a little heavy, so I need to make sure that it stays put. So I'm gonna put a lot of Gorilla Glue and hot glue. I'm really loving this little sign. I think it would look really cute on a tear tray or just on a shelf. It's adorable. lemon napkins from the Dollar Tree, some buffalo check tissue paper I got from Michaels, and a Valentine's sign that I got at the Dollar Tree. And just removing the little metal hearts, and then I'm gonna pull out the rope in the back and the staples. 
and then I'm going to sand down the holes and fill them with a little bit of spackle. And once that's dry, I'm going to sand it down and then I'm going to put some tape on the very back and just to hold the two pieces together and then I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to run a bead of hot glue down the middle. I've seen uh, a friend of mine do this, Jenny at Lovely Moments Creating, and I wanted to try it and see if it worked. It did work pretty well. And then when you're done, you just remove the tape and if there's any glue there, you just kind of sand it down and now I've got my two pieces together. Now, I don't trust the hot glue, so I'm going to also put two ends of the paint stir sticks that I had cut off from a different project. Now I'm gonna paint this with my Kills White Primer and I'm gonna give it a good coat of paint. I am gonna be covering it with the tissue paper but I don't wanna see that MDF color coming through. I wanna see the white coming through. So I'm going to measure out how much I need of this Buffalo Check tissue paper. And once I have that, I'm gonna use some Mod Podge and I'm gonna lay a coat down and then I'm gonna put down my tissue paper as carefully as possible. And I'm going to gently use my brayer tool to run over the top and get rid of as many wrinkles and bubbles as possible. I'll link that in my description box. And then I'm going to sand the edges and make sure there isn't any hangover of the tissue paper. Now I've got that lemon napkin. It's a two ply so I'm going to remove the one ply from the back and then I'm going to try to flatten out the folds that are already there. And then I'm going to position it and you can already kind of see the circle because I tried one and made a mistake. Anyway, long story, it's over with. I fixed it and now I'm just going to use Mod Podge and attach this one the right way. Don't do it the wrong way. Believe me, you got to take that ply off or else it will not work. And that's what I did wrong the first time. Because this napkin is so thin, I'm not going to use my brayer. I'm not even going to use saran wrap in a brayer because it comes right through and it's wet already. So you have to just be super gentle. Use your fingers, keep them as dry as possible and touch it as lightly as possible. It's honestly not my favorite thing to work with, but if you can get them to stay, what, the effect is very nice and super gently I'm gonna sand on the edges to get the excess napkin off. I don't wanna pull it or anything, so. Now I'm gonna use some Waverly ink chalk paint, which is like black. I didn't have black letters that would work for this, so I am painting gold and blue letters black. And I'm now gonna position my letters, and I also needed five E's, and out of two packages, I only had three E's. Was it three E's? Yeah, three E's, but I did have two extra C's, so I used the C's, and then I use a marker, and I turn them into E's. Hey, you got to do what you got to do. You have to get resourceful here. I didn't want to run out to the store. And what this is going to say is squeeze the day. Now, how cute is that? Oh my gosh. And here I come with my Sharpie filling in the little E's. It actually works out really well to do this. So if you ever have this problem, you know how to fix it now. I'm gonna put some Mod Podge over the words because I don't want any of that paint to peel off and this will just seal it very nicely for me. So if you've been watching me for a while, you know that I am bow challenged. I try, I really do. So I'm gonna make like three layered bow and I'm using a little twisty tie thing in the middle. Oh gosh, you guys, it does come out cute, but watching me do this is painful. So I almost don't wanna count this part as a tutorial. I would say watch somebody who's better at making bows. <laughs> and I guess I'll just be grateful that mine turns out at all. So literally I'm just making three bows and I'm using the twist tie to stack them. So it starts off as a small bow, medium sized bow, and then a bigger bow behind. And then I'm going to take the little lemony bow right here and I'm going to cut a little piece and wrap it around the middle to hide the little twisty tie thing. So that way it almost looks like a really cute bow, but we both know that it is what it is. And then once it's all done, I'm going to take the ends. I'm going to dovetail them with my scissors and I'm going to do that to all three of the bows. I'm just pulling the two ends of each or the two tails of each bow together and cutting them. And then I'm going to come over to my sign and I'm going to position the bow in the top middle and I'm going to hot glue it right there. I 
I'm also going to put a dab of hot glue under each of the ribbons so that they stay away from the letters and they don't cover them up. And that way you can see all the different ribbons together. I probably should have placed the bow a little bit higher so I felt like there's a gap there and I took another one of those little sticker decals and I just put it there. It was just a little lemon. And then I made a little um, hanger for the back where I put the little rope down, some hot glue and some masking tape. And then I'm gonna get out my craft paper and I'm gonna cover the back and then make a little slit for that hanger to come out. I just had a few scraps of buffalo check ribbon left over, so I decided to do a line on the very top and the bottom, and I thought that looked super cute, so I'm happy I did that. But I still felt like there was something missing. So I got this black kind of poly rope that you can get at the Dollar Tree in the automotive section, and I hot glued it all the way around all four edges, and then I felt like the sign was done. And I'm actually very happy how it turned out, even with the bow. I cannot wait to hear what you think, and if you like the way I made it look like there's a lemon over the buffalo check, that's my favorite part, you guys. I like that part a lot. It's really cute. And I will keep working on my bows. I haven't given up yet. <laughs> Yeah, why I'm using this little Our Nest is Best sign from the Dollar Tree and this cute little dish towel I got at the Air Force Base in Dayton. And it's so cute. I'm going to trace around the outside of the sign so I can cut out the cute part of the dish towel. So there it is. It's a little mason jar that says Honey Queen Bee. <laughs> I'm going to uh, fray the edges by pulling some of the threads all of the way around it. This is going to be a pretty easy DIY. Once I get all the edges pulled, I am going to paint the sign in my Kills White Primer just because I don't want to be able to see anything and the back side I want to be white so it's finished. And then you see how it fits right over the top. I'm going to take a little cutting mat and I'm going to cut each one of those lines across. So again, like they're little planks and then I will reattach them to the sign in pieces so that they look like they're individual pieces of wood. I just like that look. It's really cool and very farmhouse. Now, if you notice, there's a little twine bow on there. I want to take it off because I'm going to use it a little bit later in this DIY. I am going to attach each of these individual pieces after I fray the new edges um, with my decoupage solution. I just want them to stick right on there. And then I decided that it needed to be distressed a little bit, so I'm going to use a little teeny bit of my steel Waverly chalk paint and I'm just going to go around the edges in the back. And then I'm going to come in with a really thin brush and I'm going to do at the edges of every one of those little planks too. So I'm going to let you watch me do all of that. Oh yeah, and somewhere in the process, part of the E came off of the uh, embroidery there. So I just used a little black marker and I kind of made dots to complete the letters. So that's all fixed now. I finish all the distressing that I think it's going to need. I'm using this super cute ribbon that I got and I'm not even sure, maybe Walmart. And the pink matches the pink on the mason jar so I'm just going to put a piece of that ribbon across the bottom. And then I'm going to make a little shoestring bow out of it and then take the little twine bow that I found earlier on, that was already on the little towel and I'm going to attach that to the middle of this bow and then I'm going to put them up to the left side at the top of the little mason jar. And that's it. And I just love how this one turned out. I really think this one is cute. You'll have to let me know what you think. And this could just sit on a shelf, but I put a hanger on it with a little rope with the hot glue and the masking tape because you never know, might want to hang it up on the wall.
DIY, I'm going to use a mason jar, some faux leather from burlapfabrics.com that they were so kind to send me, and I'll put all the information in my description box, some florals that I got from Dollar Tree and Target, and then I've got those pop-up stickers you can see in the background too. Right now I'm going to use my square, and I'm going to cut a strip of the faux leather. I'd already cut out a piece to begin with. But now I'm just going to cut one that's just about the right width for what I'd like to see on my mason jar. And I'm going to cut that out after I've drawn the line on the back side so you'll never see it again. And I do a lot of trimming to get this just right. I don't put it all on camera because, you know, who wants to watch me trim? Now I'm going to take out these little um, pop-up stickers. I love these things because with my metallic silver paint from Folklore, you can actually make them look like little rivets. Now I'm going to paint them with my plaster colored chalk paint first because that'll make it easier for the silver to stick. And I don't know why I only painted two to begin with. I actually need four of these so I do go back and paint two more. I don't know what I was thinking. And then I've got these two little boards that I got out of a little shelf from the Target dollar spot. And I used the shelf for something else. And I just kept those two little shelf pieces and I decided that they would be great for this project. So what I'm gonna do is put them together with some hot glue and then it'll look like planks that way. And it was already painted white and it's already a little distressed. So I don't actually have to do anything else to that, which was really, really nice. Cause hey, when you get that and you use it as extra pieces from a different DIY, it's like bonus and it's almost like free. Now I'm gonna take my little mason jar and I'm gonna put a boatload of hot glue on there. And I'm just gonna stick it right on the planks. And it actually stays really well, but I'm going to also use my faux leather and I'm going to glue that down on either side and then I'm going to cut off the edges. So it looks like it's just kind of wrapped around it. And it's just one more little form of security. I'm going to tuck a little hot glue under little parts of the faux leather too to just kind of stick it to the jar as well. And you can see me doing that right here. And I'm already loving the way this is looking. It's very fresh and with the white, I just really like it. I, you know, I like some of the darker just Dress stuff too but sometimes it's just nice to see something a little brighter. Now I'm going to trim the edges and then tack them down with some more hot glue. Now I'm going to take those little pop-up stickers that I painted and I'm going to put two on each side towards the corners of the faux leather so it looks like little tacks or rivets holding down the faux leather. It just kind of brings that look up a little higher and makes it look a little more finished and expensive and I love the way that looks. After trimming the faux leather, I had another piece left and I decided to trim that even narrower and make a faux hanger. <laughs> We're into faux here today. I don't think it's going to be strong enough to hold this up, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim it real thin. I'm going to attach it to each side and then up and over the top. And then I'll make another little rivet on each side. And that'll be like a faux hanger on the back. I'll actually put a little bit of jute twine for a real hanger and secure that with tons of hot glue and some masking tape across it as well. And I just think this will give it such a cute look, but at the same time, I'll have a practical way to hang it without you know, breaking anything. And I'm gonna actually use two of the smaller pop-up stickers to make the little rivets or tacks for the side there for that top faux hanger. It'll just look like it's attached then by something a little bit more sturdy. And then I'm going to take the greenery that I got and I'm going to trim it down to size. 
and I'm actually going to position it and use some hot glue to attach it to the inside of the mason jar. That way I can get it exactly where I want it. I'm not looking to like fill the whole thing up. I actually want it to kind of lean up against those little planks. I think that's gonna look really cute. And then I'm gonna add the little, I think those are tulips. I'm not sure if they look like mini tulips. I don't know what they are. <laughs> anyway, it's so pretty and I'm just gonna do the same thing there. And I'm also going to tack down the leaves a little bit so they lay the way I want them to look. And instead of kind of bunched together, I like it to look a little more spread out. I can just add a drop of hot glue you won't even see it and that way it'll just look really really nice now if you decide to make this you could use any florals that you want that fit your decor you could change them out for different seasons Local Goodwill, I got this metal flower for $4 and it's really cute just the way it is. I love the colors, but I wanted to do something a little more to it. So I'm going to start off with my Waverly paint called Ocean. It's the deepest blue that I have. And I'm going to start doing the innermost part of each petal, but on the middle pieces, I'm going to do the whole thing because they're so teeny tiny. And you'll see here, I'm going to go real fast so you, I won't bore you, although this is kind of fun painting to watch, at least for me anyway. But you'll notice I'm doing the inner part of each petal going all the way around till I reach those outer petals. Then I'm going to grab some more chalk paint in the color Peacock. Gosh, I love this color so much. It's gorgeous. And I'm going to start where I left off and push out more on each petal, like kind of going halfway almost. And I'm not trying to be perfect. It's a little messy because it's really kind of a blending technique that I'm trying to do here. And I think this is so fun because I'm loving these colors together. They're so vibrant and bright. And so you can do this two ways. And you'll see as we move on where you could stop if you liked it one way and I went on if, because I like it a different way. Now I'm going to take agave, which is one of my favorite colors that Waverly has, and I'm going to put that all the way out to the edge of each petal, all the way around every single one of them. Now you can make your flower any color combination you want. I just tried to use kind of the blues to give it that peacock look, but this would be gorgeous with yellows and oranges and reds or any other combination. I just, you could do whatever you like, whatever fits your yard area, or just the colors that you prefer. I love vibrant colors in the summer outside. I just, it makes me happy. So that's what I like to see when I'm outside. As I mentioned earlier, once I finished these petals and these colors, you could literally stop right here and it would be super bright and vibrant. Now I wanted to give it a little bit of sparkle, just a little, you know, more. So now I'm going to go back to the ocean color and I'm going to dry brush it all over. That blends everything perfectly. It's very subtle and it just ties it together. And I'm going to take the metallic gold from Folk Art and I'm going to take that and I'm going to dry brush around the edges of each of the flower petals. I love the plaid products. They do the Waverly and the Folklore and I'm an ambassador for them. So I'll put some links down in the description box below. And when I get in towards the smaller petals, I realize it's going to bleed everywhere. So I'm going to get out one of my Arteza paint markers in the color gold so I can be very specific on the edges of the smaller flowers and I love the way it looks. I think I even go all the way to the ends with it. Imagine how that's going to pick up the sunlight. It's almost iridescent. It's going to look so beautiful. I mean, it could look great inside or outside. I am loving the way this looks right now, but I felt like I needed to give it a teeny bit more depth. So I'm going to, first of all, take the ocean blue and get those outer wire petals and just give them, instead of that plain green that it was, I just painted them in blue. And now I'm gonna take my ink, which is black from Waverly, and I'm gonna put it just very lightly all over like a dry brush coming from the center of each petal. Again, adding just a little bit of dimension as if there were shadows in there because they're kind of folded up a little bit, and I love it. And I'm gonna do the same thing to the outside. I'm just gonna kind of touch it up with the black around the edges, and again, give it that iron look, which it's metal, but I wanted it to look almost like iron, and I love it. Let me know what you think down in the comments, and I hope you guys like it. This 
DIY, you need four of those little terracotta pots. They're four inches and I got them at Walmart. I actually had three at the moment, so my husband was running out to get me a fourth one. Some succulents, a little plant hanger and the little coconut basket thing. I don't know what that's called that you put inside the plant hanger. And those items are all from Dollar Tree. I'm gonna remove the chain because I'm not gonna be hanging this. And I'm literally going to put it over the top, like upside down basically. And I'm gonna use some rope. I'm gonna stab some holes around the outside where each of the little um, wires are. And I'm gonna tie it on because I wanna make it nice and secure. I didn't have like a really big needle and thread. So what I did was I just took the little scissors and I kind of pinched the end of the jute twine on that and I fed it through. So I was just careful not to cut it when I did that. And it worked really well actually. Now you may not know what I'm making yet. Of course, I haven't told you either, but I'm using these little styrofoam balls that I got, I wanna say at Walmart, they were like six for less than $2. I'm pretty sure it was Walmart. Anyway, I'm using my utility blade and I'm cutting it because I need to make a head and a tail. Yes, if you've guessed right, it's going to be a turtle topiary. Oh my gosh, it's gonna be so cute. So I'm just kind of figuring out what a turtle head would look like shape-wise. So I've got a little neck coming out and I'm hot gluing that on. And then I'm going to use some twine and using that wire on the plant holder thing, I'm just gonna kind of secure it around because I'm not sure if, if the hot glue is really gonna work enough, so I just wanna make sure. So I'm, I'm also gonna put hot glue under every little piece of that twine just to be extra careful. And then I'm going to get that other ball and I'm going to cut it and kind of make it look like a turtle head. Don't ask me what a turtle head's supposed to look like because I'm just guessing. Anyway, it kind of does look like one when I'm done. And I'm gonna tie that one on as well with the jute twine, hot glue it, and then I'm gonna work my way around to the tail and cut a narrow, narrower piece of the foam and do the same exact thing. I have some Spanish moss, a really large bag that I got at Walmart, and some tacky glue that I got at the Dollar Tree, and I'm gonna use that and just brush it all on the styrofoam head and tail and attach the Spanish moss. I'm also gonna use some fabric adhesive spray to help the moss stay down because the tacky glue is only working directly on the styrofoam, but when I wanted to add more on top, I needed to do something extra. Now I really wanted it to be a bright green, but I didn't have that kind of moss. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the moss I have, and then I'm going to take some Waverly's uh, color fern, and I'm gonna turn it into green. See, you do what you can with what you have. <laughs> and actually it does turn out really good. So you just have to, it's a mess. That's the only thing. Using a small brush and I'm just kind of like splattering it everywhere. And I, when I say that, I mean literally, it started getting on all kinds of things. If you notice all of a sudden my paper got dirty, everything. Now I'm gonna build up the inside because I need a place to put the feet, which those little terracotta pots are. So by this time my husband has gotten back with the extra one and he got it at Walmart, but it was just shy of four inches. So I had to put something on it to try Try to make up for the difference. That was a little challenging, but we made it work. It just looks like the little turtle's walking now, like he's got one leg up, like he's taking a step. And I'm using some shipping filler, like that was in a box that was surrounding equipment. And I just cut it to fit inside. And I'm using a lot of hot glue to secure it. But for the legs, I'm gonna use a combination of E6000 and hot glue, making sure they don't touch each other because I heard if you let the hot glue touch E6000, it starts cooling off the hot glue too fast. So that's why I don't. And I'm holding it down gluing it in place and I'm actually gonna do that with all four of the pots. And on the one that was slightly short, I'm putting some of the tumbling tower blocks from Dollar Tree. Once the legs are on, I am poking holes through the top using a screwdriver and I am attaching the succulent. And I think the turtle turned out really cute. You'll have to let me know what you think. I've never made anything like this. He's just adorable.
really cute tin planter at the Dollar Tree and it's a little bright and shiny so I'm going to use my Kills Primer paint in white and I'm going to cover the whole thing. Not a heavy coat because I am going to distress it and I'm going to do a little bit of the inside too and then I'm going to take my Elephant Paint from Waverly and I'm going to distress it with a dry brush where you put a little bit on the brush, wipe most of it off and then drag it across your piece. And I'm mostly trying to get the seams and the edges and over the letters so that you can read them really well. And I'm just loving the look that this is giving and I think it's just, it's such a like antique kind of a look and that's one of the things I really like about doing this. I wanted to add a couple of little flowers on the front of it. I just thought that would be really cute. Go over to my little planter and I'm going to set them on there. And it really looks great because the color, the silver smart vinyl really matches. And now it's time to style my little planter with some flowers. I put some floral foam in there and I filled the sides with some other styrofoam that I had. And I'm just cutting a bunch of different flowers from the Dollar Tree. These are so cute. They're pink, white with a little yellow in the center. And then I have some more little pink, white and yellow ones with branches. And then I'm gonna use these bright yellow flowers because I wanted to tie it all together. And I think it's just so cheery and fun and I'm absolutely loving it. I'm gonna add some fern to the back just to kind of frame it and give it a little height. And then I'm gonna add some more leaves to the front. I also got a Dollar Tree and I absolutely love how this turned out. I hope you guys like it. It was super fun to make and very easy and fast. little green planter at the Dollar Tree along with these uh, lace doilies and then this is some spackle and I think I got that at the hardware store because I needed a, a larger amount and I'm going to take the spackle I'm going to dish it into a little bowl and I'm going to add some water and mix it up to kind of like a cake frosting consistency I guess that's the best way to describe it you have to be careful though because if you let it sit for too long it gets hard and then you have to add more water and I kind of had to play with it because I had let it sit maybe a little too long while I was preparing the little planter. Enter. The technique I'm going to use on this today, I learned watching TikTok. It was really a cool thing. So I'm going to take my sanding sponge from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to sand every part of the outside and then about an, maybe a couple inches into the inside as well. And if you've noticed, I have holes in the bottom. I had used this little planter last year for a real plant. And now I'm gonna take my Kills white primer and I'm going to paint everywhere that I sanded because I needed something for the paint to stick to and that shiny plastic is not great for that. So it's sticking really well with this. And this is kind of my base coat. So when I first started out, I thought, oh, I better tape down the doily. No, not even necessary. So I went to all this trouble, applied the spackle mix, and I guess because it was sitting so firmly on there, it ended up ripping the doily. So then I had to do some touch-up work. So going forward, you'll notice I don't bother taping it down. I just lay it where I want it, rub the spackle stuff over it using a brush, and when I take it off, I get this really cool texture, which you haven't seen yet because I'm having to peel that off. There it is. How cool is that? It looks like pottery. So now I'm just, look at that. I'm just holding the thing down and painting on the spackle. And then in a second, I'm just gonna lift it up and it works so much faster. And I must've spent 10 minutes taping that stuff down. So if you decide to try this, don't bother taping. It works so much better if you don't. So now all I'm doing is just cutting up a paper doily and putting it wherever I want and just creating little like random shapes and designs and just having fun with it and it's really cool. And now I'm gonna take that same green paint that I used earlier and a little bit of this Warm Buff by Apple Barrel. So first I'm gonna paint all around that spackle technique thing with that green and then I'm gonna go back with the other color over just the raised parts.
Now, a few of you have asked me about these brushes that I use, and it's called DIY Arts, A-R-T-Z, and I'll put a link in the description. I got them from my daughter as a Christmas present, but I know where she got them. They are awesome. There's blending, and there's pointy, and there's all different kinds, and this one is real pointy, so it's easy for me to get in there without knocking off those little pieces of spackle that I put on there. Now I'm going to mix a little bit of the Burnt Umber and the Warm Buff by Apple Barrel to create a distress look and I'm going to a little more than dry brush. And the reason I'm not too worried about it is that I could go back over it with the green. It did get a little heavy handed, but I wasn't sure how it was going to look until I did it. So I'm happy with it. Now I'm gonna use my rose gold metallic paint by Folklore, and I'm just gonna go in on those raised pieces. I wanna give it that little bit of shine, and I think that rose gold color goes the best with what I'm doing here, and I'm loving it. I really do, and I think when it's outside and the sun hits, it's gonna be really pretty. I'm really loving how this technique turned out in the end, and I wasn't sure. Took it outside, sprayed a clear glaze, and it's done. at the Goodwill and it had a little burlap flower in the middle which I didn't think was going to be great for outside so I just popped it right off came off super easily now I decided I wanted to make a kind of a whimsical butterfly that had all different random colors on it so I started with peacock and then I put some crimson on there these are Waverly chalk paint colors and at some point I'm going to add um, maize which is like a yellow and I'm literally just randomly placing it all around the different parts of the butterfly no rhyme or reason just trying trying not to put them all right next to each other with the same color. Now the maize color didn't cover quite as well, so I did a second coat of that one because I wanted the yellow to be a little bit brighter. I was really having fun with this, just, you know, putting the colors wherever I wanted and just kind of relaxing. It was really enjoyable to do this. A painting is very relaxing. And now I'm going to take some of the metallic gold by Folklore and I want to get some shimmer on here because remember it's going to be outside and it really will pick up that light. So now I'm doing the gold in a bunch of different places. This did take several coats because again it, it's a little thinner and so it took me probably three coats wherever I put the gold to get that to really cover the original color on this butterfly. As I was painting, I realized I really didn't like the red as much as I originally thought, so I took out my ocean color, which is a very beautiful blue, and I decided to cover every area where there was red, and now I really think the colors go together better. It matches a little better with the other piece that I have for outside, and I'm really loving this look here. I'll use my heat tool to make sure that the entire thing is dry before I move on to the next step. And of course, all my tools are in my Amazon store linked below. And now I'm going to take just a black marker and I'm going to do the little body. I decided that it needed a little more definition. So I'm just going to cover that part in the black and I love the way that looks. And I'm going to dry that off too. The next thing I'm going to do is take my agave color and I'm going to just add a little bit of that in different places. I felt like I needed another shade of blue in there and I just absolutely love it. I didn't want there to be too much of any one color and this really takes care of that for me. And then I did little touch ups here and there. And now I'm going to take my gold again, the metallic gold from Folklore and I'm going to put it on a little chippy brush and dry brush it, putting a very small amount on my brush, wiping most of it off and then dragging it across. You guys, I love this one. It looks so beautiful outside. I can't wait for you to see it. Let's do 
DIY I found this cute little piece at the Goodwill for two dollars and I know it's already got a watermelon on it but I'm actually going to paint the whole thing and I because I want the colors to be a little bit more bright and vibrant these are a little bit more muted and it's super cute just the way it is but of course I want to change it so I'm going to use my Waverly chalk paint I'm going to be using three colors I'm going to use fern crimson and then I'm also going to use a folk art paint called sage so those are the colors I'm going to be using to create a watermelon look and this is going to be the cutest little watermelon wall hanging now you see that little bunny on there <laughs> well I'm going to use my jigsaw It'll be the first time I'm ever using it I'm a little nervous and I'm going to actually do it on camera so you'll see just how new I am at doing this but you've got to start somewhere right and I've been dying to use it and I don't want the bunny on there I want it to look a little different you'll see when I get there but right now I'm just coloring the rind and then that middle layer that's kind of that lighter color and then I'm going to go in and I'm going to paint the crimson for the red part of the watermelon. And I know a lot of people do pink. I wish every time I open a watermelon it would be this kind of red. So that's why I make my watermelons red because to me that's the most appetizing. A pink watermelon is not quite as ripe in my mind so that's why I do it. Now here is my saw. So you guys I'm using this stick so that I don't cut my table. And I'm just holding it over the top and I'm just kind of aiming for those little edges. What I'm trying to do is make it look like this watermelon has had several bites taken out of it. Now I'm not experienced enough to make them look like real bites, but I'm doing the best I can and I'm happy with it. So now I'm going to, you know, sand off those rough edges and clean it up with my little ladybug vacuum and just kind of get it where I won't get splinters and I won't cut myself or anything. And now I can complete the painting on my little watermelon wall hanging. I'm going to bring out that crimson paint, that beautiful red, and I can start painting over where the bunny was. And it takes several coats to cover. And I actually did two coats of every color that I'm doing and then added a little more on the red because of the fact that there was something underneath it. a light sanding between the two green color lines and right where the red meets the lighter color just to soften it a little bit. Then I'm going to take a black permanent marker and I'm going to make my watermelon seeds and I know I make a lot of seeds but I just like the way it looks. <laughs> I hope they're not like that when I eat them. And then I'm going to use some actually dishwasher safe Mod Podge and cover the entire thing. And I'm only doing that because some other pieces I'm making might have food and so I figured I'd just take it out and use it for all of them. I have this little word weekend that was on a little sign I got and I had taken it off to wait for another opportunity to use it. And so I'm going to take that and take a couple little pieces of wood that I have and I'm going to use this to do a little bit of paper crafting. So first I'm going to put some painter's tape underneath it so it'll stay down when I paint black all over it. I want to cover that gold. And the painter's tape just works. I don't need to paint the back, just the edges and it raises this up a little bit so I'm very easily able to paint it black and I'm really happy with how that turned out. Now I'll dry it off with my heat gun. You can find most of my tools down in my Amazon store and there's a link in my description box. I'm going to take that little wood scrap that I have and I'm going to sand the edges and then I'm going to paint one side of it black and then all the edges and then most of the other side because part of it's going to be laying flat and you won't see it. I'm going to use my tight bond glue and spread that out with a little brush over the back of the word weekend and then I'm going to attach that right on top of the watermelon over the rind. I'm going to use some really cute scrapbook paper that has reds and greens in it and I'm going to cut pieces the first one is going to go right over that black one. It's actually a black kind of a swirly pattern. And I'm going to cut it just smaller than the square. 
And then the next piece, I'm going to do the same thing so you can see the edges and the layers. And I'm going to take my scissors and rough up the edges of the paper a little bit. And I learned this from a friend of mine. Um, her name is Linda at Faith Chick 777. And I'll put her link in the description box too because she makes some amazing paper crafts you'll want to see. And so I'm just getting all those pieces ready to go. And then I'm going to use my tight bond glue and I'm just going to attach it right on top. And you see how you can see the edges of each piece. And now I'm going to take this little watermelon cutout that I got at the Dollar Tree. I'm going to paint it with that crimson red and then I'm going to add the fern to make a rind and of course I'll make the little seeds again with my permanent marker. To complete the project, I'm going to position these two little pieces on the left side of my watermelon and cover the entire thing in Mod Podge. Hey there, sorry to interrupt you watching my video, but if you don't mind, if you're enjoying yourself, could you hit that like button? I would really appreciate it. Thank you. I really love it you guys. I'm absolutely smitten with this piece. oval round hack. I'm going to take one of the oval rounds of course <laughs> and then I found these lemons at Ikea and they were on sale from $4.99 to $3.59 and there's quite a few in there and I thought that was a pretty good deal and then I've got some you know little leaves that left over from some picks and some other ones and then my burnt umber paint by Apple Barrel and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my mister that I got on Amazon I'm gonna get a little bit of the burnt umber paint. I'm gonna mist all over my little wood oval and then I'm just gonna start putting the burnt umber on there. And what it does is it just glides over the top and it waters it down and then you can move it around very easily and get the desired look that you want. So then I turned it around, got the other side with some of the mist and just continued on. And you just keep adding more and more of the burnt umber paint until you get the look you want. If it's too light, add more of the paint. If it's too dark, add more of the water. And this is such a nice way of doing this to give it that really nice stained look, but without the wood absorbing it too quickly. I'm gonna take my heat tool and dry it. And then I'm gonna do the same thing to the back, but I don't need to be quite as careful about it because the back, you know, you won't see it very much. And then I'm gonna put the um, polyurethane one coat all over the front and back. Once that dries, I'm going to take these larger wood beads that I got on Amazon and I'm going to put them, there's no corners, but if there were, you know, put four of them on the bottom. And I'm going to use a combination of E6000 and hot glue so that it will dry right away with the hot glue and then stay very well with the E6000. And here we go. I'm just going to do that with all four of what becomes my little legs, but they're the little wooden beads. And I'm going to keep them natural. I think it's a nice contrast. Now I'm going to put the hole against the wood so that when it's sitting down you don't see the bottom hole because it's laying on top of it. It's the best way I think to put them. Plus it gives it a little bit of more of a flat surface to lay on and I can squeeze that hot glue right into that hole so it oozes out when I turn it over and that'll help with the hold. There we go. So now I have a little riser. Now I could have made it taller but I like those beads a lot. So I'm going to take three of these lemons. Now, I thought they were going to be styrofoam and I was going to cut them. Now, listen to this. Oh my gosh, had no idea. They were like golf balls. Seriously, they had they felt like golf balls. So now I'm going to hot glue this greenery right on into the middle. And then I'm going to tack down each of the four leaves because I want them to lay a little more flat. The lemons are going to be sitting up high enough. And then I'm going to do again... E6000 and hot glue combination with the three lemons and place them where I want. And then those last two little greenery picks, I'm just gonna kind of hot glue them in between some of the lemons. This is so cute. You can set this on a shelf, on a tear tray. It's just adorable, honestly. It could be on another riser, you know. It's just, it's so cute and festive and bright. I love it for my kitchen. It's just so bright and cheery. I don't know what it is about lemons. They're just, it's like lemons and oranges. They're just so fresh. Anyway, I really love that look and I don't know, just makes you kind of happy. Makes me think of lemonade. Tell me what you think. How would you have done this? Would you do the same thing I did or would you have made it taller? It's also something that you could make two levels if you wanted by adding something taller between.
using another piece that I got at the thrift store. It was originally from Kirkland's and this was only $2. Cute little box. It's got a hole in the top which I'm going to fully utilize. Start painting it with the crimson and the fern and again the sage to create a watermelon. So I'm going to start with the dark rind, then add a lighter strip for the other part of the rind, and then of course do the red with the seeds. And after sanding around the edges and the sides, I'm gonna cover the whole thing with Mod Podge. After that dries, I'm gonna take a little wooden dowel from the Dollar Tree and it fits perfectly in that hole right on the top. And I'm gonna actually cut it down to size with my miter shears because I didn't want it quite that tall. And I'm going to paint the whole thing black and I'm gonna use it to create a little like sign coming up out of the box. So I've got this heart tag from Dollar Tree and I had written something on it but didn't end up using it so I just painted the center with black and went ahead and dried that and then I painted the back too because you might be able to see that. Next I'm going to take some scrapbook paper and I'm going to cut little hearts that are slightly smaller than this one in the little tag and then another one that's even smaller than the first one I cut out and I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to rough up the edges on all of them and I'm going to attach them with glue to the top of the tag and then do the exact same thing of course with the next one that's slightly smaller and I'm just loving that layered look it's so cute and I just love using paper in my DIYs whenever I can it adds such a nice look and feel to it. I'm then gonna take the wooden heart and I'm gonna hot glue it directly to the dowel and so it's standing up perfectly like a little sign. I painted this little watermelon cutout from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to figure out how I'm going to attach that also to the front and then I will hot glue it in place. I also have this other little heart cutout that I'm gonna paint with the fern colored chalk paint. And then I'm going to cover that with the Mod Podge and I'm going to use some rub on stickers or transfers from the Dollar Tree and spell out the word fun. I cut out a really small piece of cardboard and painted it black so that I could put it behind because there was going to be a gap there and I didn't want the little heart to fall off so that kind of secured it right to my sign. I added a cute little love sticker from the Dollar Tree to the center of the hearts and then I put Mod Podge over everything. Now I could have stopped right there but I decided to make a cute little messy bow so I just cut up a bunch of pieces of polycrylic from the Dollar Tree in the automotive section and then a couple of buffalo check ribbons and then I'm just going to cinch the middle with a piece of the black polycrylic rope and it comes out so cute and it's just the perfect touch. The last thing I'm going to do is use some of that black polycrylic rope and just tie it through the hole on the heart and attach it. You guys, I love this and I hope you like it. I'm going to take this tin planter that I got at the Goodwill for $3. You find these every time you go. I'm going to use my crud cutter and clean it up real good. And then my heat tool to get off the price tag. And then also I need to use some rubbing al alcohol to get off the other price. I'm going to use some painter's tape and diagonally tape from one corner to the other. And I'm going to do two coats of my white Rust-Oleum linen, or white, linen white chalk paint. I always say that wrong. Anyway, and then when I near the tape, I'm going to paint away from it, so not towards it, but from the tape across. That way I won't have any bleeding. And then I'm going to dry each section off after each coat, and then I'm going to do it to the next corner. And this one, they'll be like touching, the two sides will be touching, and then when I do the other two sides, they will be touching, so it'll be kind of like, I don't know, kind of opposing corners, if you will. See, there you go. Now the most satisfying part of all, we are going to pull the tape off. And I was very happy with my lines. I feel like they came out really, really good. So that worked out great. I really didn't end up doing any touch up. I mean, there's a little drop there, but I ended up not even bothering with it because it wasn't noticeable. 
So now that I have these nice crisp lines and my planter is painted just the way I want, I'm gonna take my Dollar Tree rub-on transfers, these gorgeous little green ones with the leaves. And I had two of each kind that were big like that, so I just cut them up and I'm just gonna position them. I'm going to rub them on and check and then carefully pull them off. I did speed this up a little so you don't have to watch me scrape every single one, but I want you to see how the process goes. So here's the next side, and I kind of alternate between the two kind of leaves that I cut out. And look at that, it's so pretty, so simple. I didn't need to overdo it. And there's my other two corners that are right next to each other. And I'm gonna go ahead and do the two different pieces again. And I'm just using a little wooden stick this time. It had a better point on it, so I thought it was gonna maybe go a little bit faster, and it did. I was so inspired by my friend Leon Epp. She has a channel called DIY Beauty on Purpose. And let me tell you, she knows how to do things that are so beautiful and simple, and she knows when to stop. And she's helped me so much. So thanks, Leon Epp. I'll put her link in my description box. You really should check her out. And then I'm gonna put some styrofoam that I cut up. It was just from packing, a packing box. And then I'm gonna put three gorgeous peonies. And I think I got the this little bouquet of different flowers at Hobby Lobby on sale. And it also had these really pretty purple flowers with the little green buds. And I'm gonna put those in the four corners and then I'm gonna use my eucalyptus as filler and a couple other leaves I just had in my stash. So I've learned that you want a thriller, a filler, and a spiller. So the peonies were my thriller, the purple flowers with the long branches were my spiller, and the eucalyptus was my filler, and it just turned out gorgeous. I gotta tell you, this is my favorite flower arrangement that I've ever done, and I absolutely love it. The colors are so vibrant. This was so easy to make. I mean, I thought I was gonna have to put moss in there to cover the white styrofoam. With all the filler, I didn't have to. So let me know what you think about this one. I can't wait to hear your thoughts. is another item I got at the thrift store. It's kind of just like this little cardboard kind of oval shaped box. It was two dollars. It's so cute with the apples and I love the colors. They're similar to the colors I'm going to use but I'm going with the watermelon theme here so I needed to change it. So I'm using the color fern again, uh, the color crimson and sage to go ahead and paint this. I'm going to kind of treat the top and the bottom almost as separate pieces but make it so they can fit together. That way they could stand alone and I'm just starting to paint the rind and I'm going to change the design. It's not going to be that little checkerboard. I'm going to make it more into actually like stripes. Although I did stripes on the top piece, on the bottom I'm going to actually do them more horizontally so that it looks kind of like a typical watermelon rind. I'm just going to continue painting the colors of the watermelon and then I'm going to add the seeds and cover everything in Mod Podge. I'm going to smooth the lines by sanding them. I'm using the dishwasher safe Mod Podge on the inside to make sure that this is safe if I want to put some food in it. I had this little plastic handle that was left over from something, I'm not even sure what it was. And it's got these two little points on the end so you can poke holes in the top of this little container and I can attach them and then secure them with some hot glue. So I'm just measuring so that the holes are even from each side. And I'm gonna use my little pokey tool from the Dollar Tree and just kind of make those holes big enough and push those ends right in there and then secure it with hot glue. And it just works perfectly as a little handle. And I love how this one turned out. I hope you love it too. It's just adorable.
have. I'm going to take this little, I don't know, tin piece that I got for $3 at a thrift store. I've got these rub-on transfers from the Dollar Tree, and this was left over from a sale item from mm, Hobby Lobby. Got my Rust-Oleum chalked white linen paint and my Lagoon Waverly chalk paint. I'm gonna remove the hanger that came with it. I'm gonna use my crud cutter and clean it off, cause you know, thrift store. I'm gonna use the Lagoon paint. I'm gonna paint the entire thing front and back. It doesn't have to be a super solid coat cause we're gonna do a little distressing. I'm gonna take this makeup brush and they're really good for this, for kind of like a dry brush. Just put a little on your brush, wipe most of, most of it off and drag it across. And there you go, I've done that just to the front. And now I'm just gonna see how I might position this little orange. And I take my little snips and cut off those two pieces of wire that were sticking out. Those were attached to the original piece. Now I'm gonna cut around the part that says Hello Summer with the two flowers and see what the whole thing will look like before I get started. Now these gold foil rub-on transfers take forever and they're not easy, so take your time, make sure you keep checking it, and it won't come out perfect no matter what you do. So you have to be ready for touch-ups, which I will do in just a minute. But I had rubbed for quite a long time, I decided not to show you the whole thing. And so there it is, and I've got a couple spots. I'm gonna use my folklore, or folk art metallic paint and just kind of touch them up. And then I'm gonna take a combination of E6000 and hot glue to attach the little orange. And I'm just kind of checking where it's gonna to touch exactly. There's no point in getting lots and lots of glue for no reason. And I'm just gonna press that on, let the hot glue dry. And then I think I need to add a new hanger. So I've got this cute gold and white Baker's Twine from Target. Just gonna feed it through those little tin um, hanger things, tie a knot, and I'm just gonna tack it down with some hot glue. And then on the back, put a little piece of masking tape over it just to really make sure that it is not going anywhere. It's not heavy, but if I decide to put anything else on it, it will definitely be able to handle it. And that's it. It's so cute, so easy, so fast, and I hope you like it. Beautiful red wooden bowl at the Goodwill for $3. And after I removed the tags, which I will say were a little difficult to get off and I had to do some sanding as well, I am gonna go ahead and paint this and turn it into a watermelon bowl. So the inside will be the part you eat and then the outside of the bowl is going to be the rind. And this is the easiest DIY. It turns out so cute. And I'm gonna do, you know, the different rind colors and I'm going to do the crimson red for the watermelon part. And so the colors are fern and sage on the green and the lighter color. And then I'm gonna do the little seeds with the black permanent marker. And then I'm gonna cover this with dishwasher safe Mod Podge so I can use this for serving food or anything I want like that. And it is so, so cute when it's all done and so easy, you guys. I am absolutely in love with this little piece. I hope you guys like it. I think it just turned out great. I've got this cute little trivet. It's like a, it's like a little um, tile with some I don't know what you, mosaic kind of seashell looking things, and it's framed with a wooden frame. So it's like a trivet or a stand or a coaster. And I couldn't get the coaster out, so I just taped around it, and I'm gonna use my Rust-Oleum chalked linen white paint, very carefully paint around all of the frame front and back, and over the back of the tile because it showed the price tag, which was $2. And it looks so nice and clean and fresh now. 
and then I've got these little rub-on transfers of seashells and sea-like things from the Dollar Tree and I picked two that were really cute so I'm gonna take my little scraper and rub this one on and I had it going over the corners so then you just got to be careful fold it rub on both sides and then you can remove it and that was super easy it went right on and I didn't have any problems with this one just you know I think I saw one little dot that didn't make it so I scraped it a little bit and there it is and then I'm gonna put one in the opposing corner and it's super cute as well and I just love them they were the right color for those little tiles and it just worked out perfectly and I think this will look really cute in my bedroom which is a coastal theme if you've been watching me for a while you've heard that before and lately I've been kind of updating and making some new things for my room so this will be really cute in there I'm gonna hot glue some jute around that tile Anyway, I'm going to get all the way around the four sides, and that's it for this project. I love it. It was easy, and I hope you like it. I'm going to use this little crate from the Dollar Tree and I'm using this um, paint that I got from Plaid. I'm going to go ahead and paint that first stripe green and then I'm going to paint the middle one with some white chalk paint and then I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to kind of blend the two in that little divot if you will kind of where the planks are because I want those two colors to blend a little bit so it looks a little more gradual. Then I'm going to take some red chalk paint from Waverly called Crimson and I'm going to paint the bottom stripe and then I'm going to also do blending between the white and the red. Now I am off camera going to paint all the way around these same three stripes. I'm just not going to make you watch me do it. <laughs> but after I'm done with this I am going to paint the entire bottom on the outside. I'm not going to paint the inside of the crate but just the very very bottom in the red and that's because you're going to see that. This is going to look like books. You know you've probably seen that before but it's also going to look like a watermelon. <laughs> I'm going to take my black marker and I'm going to write hello sweet summertime and I'm just printing this but I'm going to add little surfs to the ends of the letters to make it look like a little bit of a typewriter font but maybe a little more cutesy than that. Anyway, uh, I like the way it came out so I was pretty happy with it. Next I'm going to take some jute twine from the Dollar Tree and this cute little watermelon key um, identifier, like you put it over the top of your key so you'd know which key it was and I'm going to, it has a hole on it, I'm going to add the jute twine right in it and I'm going to hot glue it to the front, it looks so cute you guys, and then I'm going to wrap the twine around several times until I like the way it looks and then I'm going to cut it off underneath where you won't see it and just kind of tie it and hot glue it down. Next, I have this luggage tag from the Dollar Tree that's also a watermelon. Oh my gosh, you guys, they had so many cute things. And I'm just hot gluing that to the very top, and that's it. It came out so cute. I love it. I'm going to use these little hoops and these little coasters that are made out of cork from Ikea and florals from the Dollar Tree and also some uh, nautical rope from Walmart. Now these little round white things, there were 12 of them and they were like on a hanger and you were going to hang scarves through the holes if that makes sense, but I cut them apart for this. And then I'm using some white twine just to kind of make them offset, I wanted to pull the top two over and I will eventually glue that little coaster in that middle one. What I'm going to do now is cut those picks way down to just teeny little pieces and then I'm going to hot glue them on around each of those little, the top and the bottom hoop if you will, and make little wreaths. So the bottom one's going to use those little yellow flowers with the leaves and then the bottom one, well actually one's the top, one's the bottom, doesn't matter, is just going to be greenery. And then I'm going to add some little purple like they're not really lavender picks, but like lavender picks. There you go. I'm going to use hot glue all the way around the back and just make sure it's nice and secure in there.
Once that is in there really secure, I've got these rub-on transfers from the Dollar Tree. They've got a lot of really cute new ones and I happened to find them and I just stocked up. I'm gonna take the word home and separate it from the backing and I'm just gonna lay it down. Make sure you don't put your fingers on the actual letters because it will make them come off. And then I'm just gonna take something a little bit sharp and pointy and carefully kind of scrape on the back there until it releases and goes on to the cork. And it really didn't take that long. Use the pointy side to pull off the backing and look at that, isn't that adorable? The last thing I'm gonna do, rub on the letters, make sure that they're really on there nice and secure. Then I'm gonna take that rope from Walmart and I'm going to do two things. I'm gonna make a bow with a really long tails and then I'm gonna attach another piece onto it and I'm gonna also wrap it around the back of one of the loops, but I want it to look like it's hanging from a bow. And you'll see that here in a second. It's so cute. It's a gift for my sister-in-law's 50th birthday party. Several items in this video are gonna be gifts for her and I will let you know. Using these Ikea items, so much fun. I hope you guys love these too. I went to Pinterest recently and got inspired by something that made me wanna make this. So I found these cute little bamboo utensils. There were like six or seven of them in a bag for $5 at, of all places, Home Goods. That's like a Dollar Tree price. So I'm taping off just above the actual spoons because I don't want any paint there. And I'm gonna paint most of the handles red using that crimson chalk paint from Waverly. And then I'm gonna add some of the folk art home decor paint in the color sage, and that will be my next level, and just to make it look like part of a watermelon rind. And I'm just gonna paint a little bit of that on all of the bamboo utensils. It takes two coats to cover with this one. It's not as thick of a paint, I guess. And then I'm gonna use a green color also from a folk art. And I do go back and thicken that up a little bit because I made too much of it the lighter green, but I, you'll see me do that a little bit later. And I do this with all three of the utensils. Then I take a black marker and I just start putting the seeds on and I put them in different directions and just kind of all over the place. And then I'm also gonna do it on the side and the back of the utensils. I just want every part that's red to have little watermelon seeds. Next, I'm gonna hot glue the handles together side by side, and that's just to hold them in place while I thread some jute cord into the holes. And then I'm gonna wrap it around and just tie it several times, or you know, wrap it several times around until I get the look that I want. Once I have it wrapped around the way I want it, I tie a knot and then I make a little loop and I tie another knot and cut off the ends and that is my hanger and so it'll be very easy to hang it now. I have this super cute burlap chevron ribbon from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to make a little bow, you know, where you make the awareness bow and pull down the middle and I'm just kind of making sure that the loops are the right size and, you know, how I want it to look and then I'm going to take some jute twine and tie a knot around the middle to hold that bow in place. Then I'm going to take another cute little red gingham ribbon that I also got at the Dollar Tree. I'm going to make another bow the same way but just slightly smaller and then I'm gonna hot glue that right to the center of the burlap bow. And then I'll fluff that out and I will attach them to the very top handles of the little utensils. And then I will trim the edges. I'll do angled edges on the gingham bow and I'm gonna do dovetails on the burlap bow. So I just wanna give it a little bit of cuteness, you know, cuteness, is that a word? <laughs> anyway, but it's cute. So that's what I was going for. I wanted to just have that kind of summertime watermelon picnic feel to it. And I think that I accomplished that. What do you think? I think I mentioned earlier, but I decided to add a little more of the green because I feel like the middle part of the rind was just too thick. So that's all I'm doing, just touching that up and just thickening up the green part. And I like the way that looks a lot better. And then I've got another one of those little key holder things or key identifier things from the Dollar Tree. I'm gonna put a little piece of the Red Kingdom ribbon right through it. 
and then I'm going to hot glue it to the back but I'm going to have it sitting right in the center of where the bow is and I absolutely love it. I just hot glue it, trim the edges and it's done and this thing is so cute you guys. You have to let me know what you think. in the whole video. This is a cutting board from Ikea and these are robot transfers from the Dollar Tree. Now I cut out a few of the words that said spring and one that said tiptoe through the tulips. I guess I just didn't particularly like that one. And what I did was I left everything else on there that I really liked and I kind of positioned to see if it would fit on the cutting board. And then I laid it exactly where I wanted it. And then I took my little scraper tool and I had to go over every single part. So this was a little time consuming, but oh my gosh, you guys, this is so worth it. This looks so high-end and expensive when it's done and it's gorgeous I mentioned in another video that I'm putting together a kind of a you know cutting board collection if you will and this is gonna be one of them so really fun thing here I was at Ikea shopping my friend Leonette from DIY Beauty on Purpose doesn't have an Ikea near her so I kept sending her pictures of things and talking to her on the phone and picked up the one she wanted so I took her along shopping it was so fun and I took the S from the word spring that I cut off so that I could have it say S for our last name took some polycrylic one coat by Minwax did a couple coats on the top and that's it that is all it took and this looks so gorgeous and so expensive and that cutting board was less than ten dollars and the transfer was a dollar twenty-five I absolutely love this one. I cannot, I just cannot get over how much I love this one. I hope you guys love this idea and want to try it. Let me know if you think you're going to try to do something like this. I can't believe how good it came out. Yeah, why I'm using one of those plain black mats from the Dollar Tree. And I'm going to be using the Crimson Red Waverly Chalk Paint as well as the green paint from Folk Art. And I'm literally just going to paint little triangles with kind of the rounded edge. They're basically little slices of watermelon. And then I'm gonna paint the rind, and I'm just using a foam brush for that. And I'm just gonna put them all over this mat, just different places, directions, whatever. Super easy, you guys. And then I go back in and I darken up the green, and I'm gonna use a black marker to make the seeds. I spray it with a clear seal, and that's it. Easiest DIY ever. I am using one of these like cork heat pads, like a trivet. They come three in a pack. And then remember those little round things? This is what it looked like before I cut the whole thing in half. So for this one, I'm going to use six of those little rounds and I'm gonna cut them out in two rows of three. And then what I'm going to do is use a combination of um, E6000 and hot glue to attach them to the very base of this little cork round. And this is going to be such a cute little plant stand. So there I am putting the E6000 on and then hot glue on either side of it. And then I'm going to attach that directly to the edge of the cork round. And I'm going to do that on actually all six of those rounds. I'll, I'll attach each one even though they're attached to each other in rows of three. I still want to make sure there's a connection with all of them to the cork. There, I am now attaching the last one and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some well, it's actually like rope I got at Walmart it's kind of thicker than like the Dollar Tree twine for example and I'm going to get a piece at first I wasn't sure how long so I was kind of wrapping the whole thing around but I'm gonna hot glue it to where each of those intersections of the rounds are and I'm just gonna go around like three times and then hot glue the end I'm gonna do that with all of them once I figured out what size piece, it was much easier to just cut the piece and do it without having to stick the whole roll through. And I'm going to keep securing that with hot glue to make sure it's very solid. And now I'm going to do all the rest, and there they are. And then I'm going to take one piece of twine, I'm going to put it, see, all the way around on the inside and hot glue it in between each of those intersections to make sure that it's secure. 
I've got four wood beads that I had ordered on Amazon, always in my Amazon store if I say that. And I'm gonna attach that with a combination of E6000 and hot glue as well. And those will be the little legs. So it's like a planter riser. And I'm gonna show you the, in the reveal what it looks like without a plant in it and with a plant sitting in it. And I think it's so beautiful. It's like farmhouse boho. My sister-in-law is gonna get this as a present too, and that's her style. So I really, really think she's gonna like this. For this DIY, I'm using a little round tag from the Dollar Tree and some watermelon napkins that I found also at the Dollar Tree. I'm gonna use this white chalk paint from Home Decor, and I'm going to paint one side of this after I remove the little string. I didn't want the black underneath the napkin that I'm using to decoupage because then it would show through and it would affect the colors of the napkin. Now I'm going to take the napkin out and I need to separate it because it's more than one ply and so that's what I'm doing right now. And then I literally am going to put some Mod Podge on the little tag and then I'm going to set the napkin right on top and I'm going to use my brayer and attach it, try to get rid of any bubbles. Once that dries, I'm just going to very gently rip the napkin off, pushing down, and then I will have my whole entire tag covered. I'm going to poke a hole where there was already a hole, and then I'm going to add Mod Podge to the top. I'm going to let that dry, and then I'm going to trim around the edges and make sure that I get all of the little stray pieces and rough edges off there. Next I'm going to trim some little pieces that were from the rind part of the napkin and I'm attaching them. I don't end up liking how that looks, so even though I did go ahead and do it, I mod podged over the top and then I took out my paint and I just filled in where the rind should be with the green and then with the sage and then I made the little layer with the white and I, look, I think it looks a lot better now that I painted it. I should have just done that from the beginning, but that's how it goes sometimes. turn the tag over and I'm just going to go ahead and paint it all green and then use the sage to create the other lines on the rind of the watermelon. I didn't need to paint it white because the green covers the black perfectly. Now I'm going to take some beads that I got from Amazon, which were wonderful. They're in my Amazon store. And I'm doing four of each color, so the green and the white and the red. And I'm just putting them on a skewer stick to make it easier to paint them. And of course, I dry everything in between. I just don't show you every time I do that. And then I'm going to string them on some jute twine. I'm going to put a little piece of tape on the end so it's easier to string them. And I'm just going to do a pattern of green, white, and red. I'm going to repeat that until I've used all of them. And then I'm going to stick the end of the jute twine right through the hole on the tag and I'm going to attach that with a knot. Next I'm going to make a tassel. I'm going to do this really fast and I will refer you to a video that I will have down in my description box that gives you very good detail and it's much slower. So basically I'm taking three different kinds of twine and I'm going to wrap it around my fingers. The, the skinniest one I'm going to do 30 times, the next one I think I'm going to do um, 15 times, and this last one I'm only going to do like 10 times, only because they're thicker. And I just kept them all separate with a little clip. And now I'm kind of merging them together because I wanted to have all these different colors. I didn't want it to just be the jute twine. And once I do that, I'm going to put it through the loops and then I'm going to tie that. So now it'll be attached to the garland. And then I'm going to tie a string around just the top portion and then I'll go and I will snip all the other loops open and I'll give them a trim because they're all over the place since I used all different kinds of twine and you know it just didn't come out even which is fine I'm going to make it look great when it's all said and done. And then the last thing I'm going to do is just wrap some more of the regular jute twine around a few times just to thicken up that little section that I have tied off. And I think it looks really cute and I love all the different colors. Please let me know what you think and I hope you guys really like it as much as I do. I'm going to 
use this really large planter from Ikea. It was only a dollar and it's got kind of a rough feeling on the outside so I didn't have to prime it. I'm going to use this celery color chalk paint by Waverly. I also got these napkins at Ikea. They are three ply. They're gorgeous. So for that first like kind of row around the top there, I'm going to use two coats of the celery color by Waverly. I love that color so much. It's beautiful. Then I'm going to separate my plies because if it's three ply, you got to remove two pieces. I learned this trick from my friend Kathy Jo at Kathy Jo DIYs that if you put a tape, piece of tape on the back and you pull it apart, it will help separate the plies. Now I've always had a pretty easy time getting the first ply off, but when there's three plies, that last one has always been really hard. So you see how easy that just came off? I put another piece of tape and look at this. I was able to separate it so easily. I used to spend ridiculous amounts of time doing this. So this is an awesome hack. Thank you, Kathy Jo. Now I'm going to take this. At first I took a big piece of the napkin and started using Mod Podge to put it on and then I started cutting it into thinner strips. It was a lot easier to manage in thinner strips and it's a pretty busy pattern so it's okay if they don't match up perfectly. So just lay down the Mod Podge and then carefully put down the napkin. And I do use saran wrap over it to help smooth it because if you get your fingers wet it starts pulling the napkin up and ripping it. So I just laid it down. There's my saran wrap and that just really made a difference. Because it was a round surface, I didn't use my brayer. It was just easier to use my hands. And now you see I'm starting to use strips. Eh, you know, you get smarter as you do it. <laughs> and it does make it a lot easier. So I'm only gonna do that for those three rows in the middle. So the top row is the celery color. I'm gonna put the napkin on the three rows, if you will, in the middle. And then I'm gonna use a different paint color in a minute. I'll show you on the bottom. And now I'm just taking pieces. I'm gonna cut little pieces just to fill in the gaps try to make a match not perfect and honestly once it's all done you don't even notice so this is just a very forgiving project very easy and it really does end looking very high-end I'm gonna take my exacto knife and make sure there's no excess hanging over the top then I'm gonna take my moss color by Waverly which is slightly darker than celery I'm gonna do that whole bottom row and the very bottom of this planter and I think it's just gorgeous and I'm gonna take my one coat you know polyurethane and I'm gonna put like two or three coats on it because this will probably sit outside and I want to make sure it's good I'm also using nautical rope from the Dollar Tree I, it was a three strand cord I separated the three strands from part of it and used single strands and then up at the top there I used two strands together and then I put single on either side I really like the pattern that it created so three below the Mod Podge three above the double and then a single on either side at the top. I love this one, it's gorgeous. This is also a gift for my sister-in-law. For this next Dollar Tree calendar hack, I'm gonna use the 2021 Farmer's Market calendar and the month that has the fresh squeezed lemonade. I got this cutting board for $3.99 at the Goodwill. Now I'm gonna start sanding it because it's got a couple of spots on it that I don't like. Um, I end up staining it, but I'm gonna cut each piece based on those planks. I had a plan when I first started, but I ended up abandoning it. So I start off doing it this way, and then I decided to take my X-Acto knife and fussy cut around everything. <laughs> You'll see, there it is. It took a while, but I just put a video or two on, and that was it. Now I'm gonna take my wood finish by Minwax. It's called Weathered Oak and I'm just gonna go ahead and stain the whole thing. This is after I sanded it. This really helps with getting the tone that I wanted on it and making it look more even. I'm gonna do that to both sides. Then I'm gonna use my Minwax Polyurethane and I'm gonna use that for my decoupaging of the stuff I cut out. So I'm gonna put a coat underneath, lay down, you know, I'm doing it in sections, lay down the letters and the picture, and kind of push it down lightly with my finger and then I will go back over the top with the polyurethane and I'm going to do the same thing with the rest of it. I'm just kind of lining up the pieces you know where they matched up because originally I was going to do them as planks and then I realized nah but I love how it turned out. What do you think? I am getting into cutting boards lately. I'm starting a little display in my kitchen of all different shapes and sizes so this is one of the many cutting boards that I have to work with so you'll be seeing more of them. I just love them. I love decorating with them. For this inspired project, I'm taking that little Dollar Tree sign and a book that I've already read. I'm going to take it apart. I'm going to take the beads off, take the little insert off, just using a staple remover to pull out those staples. But they were stubborn, so I had to use my little snips. And I'm going to use my Kills White Primer Paint. And I'm going to just paint that front of the little, actually it's the back of the little sign, because I'm not going to use the other side. That will be the back. I'm going to take a sharp blade and I'm going to cut down the spine of this book and just get some book pages out. It's just a small paperback. I just wanted one that had a lot of words on it. So 
So what I'm going to do is kind of fold it into thirds and then use the blade again and cut little pieces. So like a third of each page. Then I'm going to take those and I'm trying to put together a little contraption here to roll them and make it easier. Can I just be honest? Nothing made it easier. I bet there's like a quilling tool out there or something that I know nothing about. Wish I had it. But what I did was I just rolled it around this little stem from a faux flower piece I got somewhere. And I'm going to keep rolling those until I have a whole bunch. And what I'm going to do to add to my lemon decor is I decided I'm going to make a cute little lemon and frame it. So once I get a bunch of these little rolled pieces, I cut some of them to kind of shape the lemon. So I want to kind of round it as it gets to the top. And then the bottom also is kind of graduated. And then I'm going to cut a little pieces and make like a stem. Now I could leave it just like this. It would be in a way the way the inspired piece was where it's just book pages. But I wanted to add some color so it fit with my lemon decor. After I finish gluing everything down with my hot glue, I'm gonna take out some Waverly chalk paint. And the first color I'm going to use is maize, so yellow. And then the next color I'm gonna use is fern, which is a green. I'm gonna put them in the caps of those and water it down by squirting a little bit of water in there. And the reason I'm doing that is I want you to still see the writing on the book pages. And if I use the solid color, you wouldn't be able to see them anymore. So by watering it down now, I just lightly put some on and I'm going to put yellow, obviously, all over the lemon and green on the stem. But you can still see that they're book pages and that's what I wanted. I really love using the book pages. I just think that is so cool. It just It's just a kind of whimsy look and I, and I really love it. And once that's done and it dries, I will put it back in the frame. But first, uh, you know, I have to finish all my projects off. So what I'm gonna do is get out some craft paper and I'm gonna go ahead and hot glue it to the back. And I didn't have the perfect size piece, so I just used some scraps, which was fine. Use it all up. Then I will pop it back into the frame and there it is. It's good to go. And now it's gonna complement my lemon decor. And I hope you guys like it. rug from Ikea. It's just a really nice kind of neutral cream color. It's got some nice fringed ends. It's 100% cotton by the way. And then I've also used my sublimation printer and I designed in Canva. It says Gardner's Garden. That's their last name. And then I'm going to take a rotary cutter and all of my quilting mat and tools and I'm just going to cut it into pieces because I want to make kind of a rectangular pillow. I'm going to press it with my Cricut Easy Press because it's kind of folded up you know so I was trying to straighten it out as much as possible. Now I'm going to put the fringe on the inside because when it's turned right side out that needs to be on the outside and I'm using these little clamp clips whatever from the Dollar Tree to hold it down. I'm going to use a combination of Beacon Fabric Tac glue and hot glue. I gotta tell you, between the two of these, it's solid. I mean, I cannot believe how well this is put together. I wasn't sure how this is gonna work. I didn't feel like getting my sewing machine out and this is too thick to run through a machine unless I had a special foot for it. So I just literally went crazy with the Beacon Fabri-Tac glue and the hot glue and it just really, really worked. And then I clamped it shut to give it time to dry. And once I had it the way I wanted, it left a little spot open. I reached in and I turned it right side out. There it is. And then I'm gonna put my mat underneath it for the heat press. I'm gonna take some parchment paper. And then I had mirrored my design so it would go on right. And then I put some parchment paper over it so it won't ruin the fabric. And then I just looked up um, you know, the instructions to see how long it needed to sit under the heat press. And look at this. It is now sublimated into the pillow. And then I've got some extra pillow stuffing left over from an old pillow. I always save the stuffing. And I'm just gonna put as much in there as I can. And then I'm gonna turn the edges in so that creates a nice clean seam. And again, using the Beacon Fabric Tech glue and the hot glue and those clips, I'm gonna just do little pieces at a time so that I can make sure that I get it nice and solid and closed up. And I did part way and then I filled it some more because I really wanted this pillow to be nice and stuffed. It's gonna sit on a cute little patio couch and it's got, they have burgundy in different colors. So this is a perfect neutral color to go with whatever they do. So now I have glued it together and I'm removing my clamps and look how good this came out. It's solid, you guys, and it's a nice, thick, 
fabric because it's really a rug. So don't hesitate to use things like rugs and placemats and all different things to make pillows. They do such a great job. I loved how it turned out. Now, I have had this little tin planter sitting in my stash with the jute twine wrapped around the top. I think I got it at either Dollar Tree or Walmart, but I've had it sitting there forever. So I'm just going to clean it off with some rubbing alcohol. The Inspired Peace used stencils. And I have these really cool adhesive stencils also from Walmart uh, made by Waverly. And I love them because you don't get as much bleed through. And that's my issue with stenciling. So I just took a little piece of a foam brush and I'm using my White Kills primer paint for this. And I'm doing one stripe at a time, but I'm doing them all at different levels like the inspiration piece and then I'm drawing it with my heat tool in between so that I don't have any issues with moving paint around where I don't want it. So I'm going to do this all the way around the little planter and I just think it's really cute. I mean it could be farmhouse or boho depending on how you style it and where you put it in your home too, what's around it. Kind of has the ability to take on whatever. And I'm using my little, I guess it's like a scoring tool from Dollar Tree to rub off any little spots of paint that got where it shouldn't. Another thing I like about this is you could change out the florals for whatever season you're decorating for. And now I decided I need to put some flowers in it. So I got some beautiful pink roses and baby's breath from the Dollar Tree. And I'm just kind of figuring it out. And I'm going to use some styrofoam from a packing box and stick it in there. And then I'm just going to go ahead and make the arrangement, add some other greenery just to give it a little more of an interesting look. And that's it. You guys, this one was so easy. I love it. And it's going to go so well in my home. Let me know what you think down in the comments. this charger. It's made out of wood. It was $3.99, but it was originally $15.99. And I'm going to take that same Rust-Oleum linen white chalk paint, and I'm going to paint the whole thing. And then I've got this napkin from the Dollar Tree and Mod Podge. And then I've got, of course, I've got my lemons and limes again from Amazon. I'm going to clean this whole thing off. But first, I'm going to put a hanger on the back, because if I forget to do that, it's going to be harder to do once I put everything on there. So I just took a little piece of rope, tied some knots, put a little ribbon over it to make it look cute. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and paint this plate. I did two coats, but I'm gonna put stuff over the top so I wasn't too worried about it. So this napkin I thought was two ply. So there I am taking it off. It didn't say anything on the packaging. So this is something to really be aware of. Now I'm covering a little section in the middle with the Mod Podge and I'm just gonna start in the middle. And everything seems fine at this point. I left this one in here because I want you to see what happens when you don't remove all the plies and you do uh, decoupaging. So now I'm just laying down some more Mod Podge. I'm doing it little sections at a time to try to avoid, you know, a lot of wrinkles and bubbles. But do you see what happened? There was a third ply. Well, now I can't get it off without ruining the whole charger. So I'm going to go with it and lesson learned. And I'm just going to try to decorate over that stuff so it's more in the background. I've got this garland from the Target Dollar Spot for three dollars. Got these grass pieces, faux grass from Amazon, and I'm going to start putting them on, kind of where the bottom, the points meet together at the bottom, and I'll just kind of build up from there. And I think I used three or four pieces on each side, and I did cut that pick apart so I could put them where I wanted them rather than wherever the pick would kind of dictate. And you see, I'm just kind of fitting them in there and going up slightly towards, you know, the higher parts. And there I. I filled it all up so you can't see that stuff on there and then I'm gonna take a couple of those lemons and some of the pieces from that little garland I got at the Target dollar spot stab them into those lemons and then hot glue the lemons on and then I'm gonna put a little dab of hot glue and get those leaves to lay down a little nicely and then I'm gonna take some of those lemon slices and little lemon wedges and put those down. I've got a little piece of wood left over from something from Dollar Tree and I'm going to find that really pretty yellow white polka dotted uh, scrap of paper. I'm just going to cut a piece to match. Now I am going to show you me doing the scissor blade roughing it up but first I want to have a color showing so I took a yellow job marker from the Dollar Tree and I'm just putting a little border around it. And then there I am taking those scissor blades. I learned this from my friend Linda at Faith Chick 777 DIY and Design. I'll put her link in my description box because she's amazing. 
and I just made some little fake stitches on there because I didn't want to sew around it like she does, but I love that look. And then I've got this amazing little two-sided tape applicator I got on Amazon, and that way I can just stick it right on there without having to use any glue and worry about wrinkles or bubbling or anything. And now I'm just gonna hand write easy peasy lemon squeezy. I just didn't get my Cricut out or look for stickers, but you certainly can. Um, I just figured for something so small, I'd be really careful and try to write nicely. It's not perfect, but just for fun. So I like the way that looks. And then once that's done, I'm going to put some little dots around all the ends in the word lemon, just to give that word a little more personality. And that's it for that piece. All I'm gonna do is hot glue it right onto that spot where all the leaves are in the bottom. And that's it for this one. And I think it turned out so cute. There's the original again, very plain. And look what we have now, a cute little lemon decor wall hanger or shelf sitter. I really love this one and I hope you guys like it too. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you. You are truly a blessing to me. I've got another video on the screen that I think you'll really like. So if you want to watch more, click on that. And if you do, I will see you there. Bye. I've been out on the streets where the lights are red. I've been hiding the world safely in my hand.